<laughs> it's so good to see you all, guys. I'm a little bit whacked tonight, but I'm okay with that because, you know, it's plan A. Plan A is getting whacked and staying whacked. We we so, whacked. Yeah. So let's stay in that place. <laughs> and uh, let's stay, you know, simmering in 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 the love wine, in the in the whack wine. So mm-hmm. you guys are on this call live. So I I'm I'm trusting this um this some impartation. Not that you need impartation, but join in with me in the w- wine <laughs> and in union. So Yahweh. Woo! So let's begin this session with 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 a few drinkies, okay? Now I know we're all busy, we've all got crazy lives, but we have to learn to practice meditation as a lifestyle, and that is simply this: what is meditation? Meditation is coming into. Are you ready? Here we go. Awareness of your oneness. Meditation is coming into awareness of your oneness with the Trinity and that their world is your world. That as you rest in them, they rest in you. That their life is your life. Their strength is your strength. So it's the practice in Hebraic is called kavar. That's a beautiful word. Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. And the word there is kavar. It's not wait. It's not waiting, looking at your clock, waiting. No, it's something far more exciting than that. It's the word entangle or entwine. Those who entangle in the Lord will renew their strength, their body. They'll rise up on wings. So entangling into God opens up all of the stuff in the Beyond Human book. Now, I've experienced a lot of the stuff in this book, um, And it was a byproduct, a byproduct of that creamy, delicious, happy, innocent, cocoa, bliss bomb, happy, outrageous, crazy, kinos, new creation gospel that is too late. You can't do add anything to it. All you could do is feast on it. Drink it. You're in Psalm 23. You are in. You're an innie. Now, this is very different to the theology of the charismatic move. There's always trying to say, God, we need you to come. We need you to do this. We need you to do that. In in the kainos theology, we realize it's too late. Jesus has swallowed us. We're in. We're in him. We're right in him. Colossians 3, the secret of your life is that you are in Christ, in God. So we're in, in, in. (laughs) And then the cool thing is they're in us. So Holy Spirit's in us. Your body's the temple. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory, and the Father's in you, in Jesus. So you're in them. So I guess we are wheels within wheels, and we're in them, and they're in us. So what do we need to do to start to live in that is we learn to very gently practice being in union with God. You're already in union. So. We're going (laughs) to we're going to do it now. We're going to we're going to do a union activation now. Okay, so your mind wants to think about things like what food you're going to eat, what you're going to do later. That's okay. Think of them as clouds in the sky. Just let them pass by. All you're going to do is turn into the kingdom within. So all the mystics knew this. They called it the interior castle. The kingdom is within you, Jesus said. Jesus said, don't go looking over there. Don't go looking over there. Look inwards. He is the light that lights the heart of every man. And he's in you, the spark. So one of the ways we return to awareness is we turn back to our body by practicing breath. Now, the Jews practice this and other religions. It it is a very biblical concept. The word breath and ruach, breath and spirit are the same word. So Jesus breathed into his disciples. Yahweh breathed into Adam and we breathe him in and breathe him out, which is hey, yod, hey, vav, hey. So God's name has breath in it. It is breath in it. It's a window into worlds. It's a window into other realms. It's a window of grace. And hay is shaped like a window that's open. It's an open window. So when we move back into the breath, 
I want you to just take some deep breaths. That's how easy it is to enter into some of these states. You're practicing being in the breath. Paul, John said this, I was in the breath on the Lord's day. And then you can add these words. These are words I use. I'm in you and you're in me. I'm with you. You're with me. We are one. So we come into this oneness. <laughs> So let's do that now. We're going to take one minute and you can use your own words, but just stop for a second and feel God. You're in the divine embrace. You always are. He'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. He loves you and included you and chose you before the foundation of the world. So we enter into the rest and go, I love you. You love me. I rest in you. You rest in me. I'm one with you. You are one with me. Your life is my life. Your spirit is my spirit. Your world is my world. We are one. We are one. Now breathe. We are one. I know that now is a beautiful moment. Now is a beautiful moment. And as Julian of Norwich said, all is well. And all shall be well. So just speak that now around you. All is well. And all shall be well. Woo! You can move your arms. You can feel the angelic. I love moving my arms sometimes when I'm meditating. You can use the name of God. Yod. Breathe. Hey, Vav, hey, we've only spent a couple of minutes doing it, and isn't it so powerful? Isn't it so powerful? Imagine sitting for half an hour a day just enjoying God. You find you get infused knowledge, remote sight. All these things open from union, and that's the future. That's the future kinos theology that's coming on the earth, that Jesus has joined us in the dance forever, permanently united. And it, it means the charismatic church and the prophetic church is going to have to change its theology to come back to the blueprint that we're in Jesus. We're one with Jesus. We are in him and he is in us. And separation is an illusion. Separation is a lie. We are included. 2,000 years we bled into one. He restored what was lost. Woo. Okay. So uh, how are we doing so far, Rach? We doing good? Can I can I just talk to you for a second? Yeah, yeah, we're doing good, honey. Did that feel good? <laughs> yes, always does. It's Did amazing. Did you feel it? Centering, focusing on him. Yeah. Do you know what, guys? I would love to do like a couple of hours of this for the mm -hmm. brave. Someday I would like to, I know I've said this, but I've been thinking about this. I'd like to do a meditation day. Come on. But you'll just have to learn to let go of your thoughts and stay with me. And it's very, very powerful. You could go in and in and in mm -hmm. until you lose yourself. They call it abandonment. Jean Goyon called it abandonment, where you are so one with God. 
that you are just blurred completely, body, soul, and spirit. And that's when your body starts to shift dimensions. Wow. That's how Jesus walked on water. He looked like a ghost. He was so in union with the Father that his molecules were shifting. And one of the reasons we don't see many phenomena in meetings is we're staying ankle deep. We're just splashing around, which is fun. But I believe church is going to fundamentally change. I really believe that. I believe Christianity is going to change. There's no going back. We are going into the next age, and that's an age of oneness. In fact, Jesus said that revival wasn't going to transform the world, all the signs and wonders. He said oneness would. It's in John 17. He said, when they see that I'm in you, you're in me, and they're in us, and we're in the Father, and the very love the Father has is in them, and you love them with the love you loved me. He said, the whole world will believe, will see, will open up. So it's union in love that's going to transform the world. And union is something you've already got. Christ has come. So I'm going to keep going now, Rach. I'm going to keep talking. 2 Corinthians 5.17 is the core text I always use. When anyone is in Christ, it is a whole new world. A whole new world. Whoa. I love Disney songs. A whole fantastic point of view. Yeah, it's a whole new world, guys. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Get it and look at every version of it. Get whacked off it. Marinate in it. Pickle. Get pickled by the gospel. Woo! (laughs) Yeah, a whole new world. So whoever's in Christ, in. Paul uses that word all the time. In Christ is in a whole new world. The old things are gone. Everything is fresh and new. So everything's fresh and new. You now live in a world with angels, with saints. You can ascend, shift dimensions, get infused knowledge, remote sight, remote healing, bilocation, trans relocation, metamorphosis, illumination. You can walk with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I was engaging them earlier. You can get to know your angels because you're like Jesus and Jesus talks to angels. You can get to know the realms, dimensions. You can have cosmic awareness. You can start to move in miracles, signs and wonders. You can move in deliverance. You can sit in the courts. You can focus in a new name you can start to add many names because jesus has many names so you can start to have lots of names and functions and structures that you engage with and it's all joy it's a realm of joy we're going into such a powerful age the world is going to wake up in wonder it's already waking up it's the church that's a bit slow come on church wake up wake up so this good news is not a human message. Galatians 1.11, listen to this. This is Paul. Paul got so whacked by this. He said, the good news I have spread is not a human message. So this Beyond Human book is not human. That's why it's called Beyond Human, by the way. I'm quoting Paul. Paul said, this message is beyond human. It's not a human message. Galatians 1.1 is not a human message. It's more beautiful more delicious than we ever imagined. Listen to this verse. This is good. This is creamy. Ready? Get ready for this. Galatians 2, 19. In the mirror translation, God made me alive together with Christ. I'm going to say that again. God made me alive together with Christ. I love that word together. Say together. Together. God made us alive together. So it's not separate. It's together. Woo! Woo Woo-hoo-hoo! How can any human effort improve on this? The terms co-crucified and co-alive defines me now. Christ in me and I in him. So we're in Christ and Christ is in us. That's it. Co-crucified and co-alive. So we're alive. Surprise, you're a new creature. The old has gone and the new has come. Okay, so I know where time's flying. So I could stay in the gospel for a lot longer, but I'm going to be a good boy. Rachel said to stick to my notes. And and I'm going to go forwards now and talk about our new life in Christ. I could hover. Okay, I'll do one more verse about being joined. Okay, hang on, guys. I can't get away from the gospel. 
I'm whacked on it. I'm wrecked on it. Get ready. Colossians 3, 4 in the mirror translation. Can you see it? Can you see in that mirror? It says this, we are joined in oneness with him. Just as his life reveals you, your life reveals him. Whoa, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, guys, we are awakening. I'm a gospel junkie. I love the junkie. Uh, I love the sorry. <laughs> I don't love the junkie. I, I do love junkies. I love everyone. I love the gospel. The gospel, we've made it so small, guys. When people say it's a double portion year, say to them, it's too late. I'm having it all. I've got the unlimited realm of Christ. I'm already in him. You know, Bob Jones used to say his ceiling would be our floor, that we're going to go higher than him. You know what? I encountered him in the cloud of witnesses, and he said, I was wrong. I created ceilings and floors. He said this, you live, tell them they live in the unlimited realm of Christ unlimited realm of christ and a lot of the prophets when you encounter them in the cloud of witnesses they're saying don't listen to what we said here because it was broken it was fragmented but come up come up and see beyond the prophetic words they released so don't live off the prophetic the prophetic is the, the entry level union and expansion and ascension is where you're meant to function seated in christ in heavenly places OK, so tonight we're talking about shifting dimensions. And now this is a really cool topic, guys. All around us, these dimensions exist from the very beginning, from the very beginning, you are multidimensional. You came as a spark from Yahweh. You traveled through dimensions. Angels escorted you and he knit you together in your mother's womb. We have always been multidimensional, but what we want to do is activate this realm so we become aware. And that's what Mike Parsons is going to share some of that tonight. After I finish this session, he's going to share some in the second part, and we're just going to engage with it. So listen, guys. Wow, 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 wow. When Adam fell and Eve fell, they fell out of dimension. So what did Jesus come to restore? He came to restore what was lost, what was lost, which is gates, doors, dimensionality, where they could see the tree of life, they could walk with angels, they could walk with Yahweh, they could govern creation, they could affect animals and nature and add cosmic awareness. Jesus came to restore what was lost. So it's not the gospel of get a ticket to heaven. That's not the gospel. No, nowhere in the gospel does it say that. It says you are seated in Christ. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe it and live it. It's the new life flowing out of you, exploding out of you. That's the gospel. Heaven on earth now in you. This new earth is creating a new heaven. This new heaven is creating a new earth all around you. Woohoo! So my mandate is to pull on that future now. Pull on it now. Listen to this powerful verse in 2 Timothy 1.10. This truth is now being unveiled by the revelation of the anointed Jesus, our life giver, who has dismantled death. Listen to it, guys. I'm going to start again. 2 Timothy 1.10. This truth is now being revealed. It's open, guys. We're in the age of the open book. It's been unveiled by the revelation of the anointed Jesus. So it's the revelation of Jesus our life giver who has dismantled death, obliterating all of its effects on our lives and has manifested is his immortal life in us by the gospel. I want you guys to do homework and look at 2 Timothy 1.10 and marinate in it, pickle in it, get whacked by it. It says Jesus destroyed death, obliterating all of its effects. So we are now alive, guys. John 10.10. 10. Now we're alive. Let's get on with it. Let's start to encounter angels, govern creation. Let's have some fun. Let's stop waiting for the next revival. You are that revival. You are the new wineskin. We don't need a new wineskin in meetings. Jesus is the new wine skin jesus and you together containing the divine nature of god christ in you the hope of glory that you might know wow woo, woo, his inheritance in the saints his incomparably great power in us who believe okay so 
we're talking about dimensional shifts. Now, this is the amazing thing. I believe where we're going, I'm going to be vulnerable with you. I believe our bodies are included in the next age. This isn't just we're going to ditch our bodies and die. I believe Enoch and Elijah are a pattern of what's been released. There is a company of people who are going to be like the watchmen in, Revelation, in, in the Gospels who come in and out of the realm of the spirit. I'll come back to that now. But consider this. Wow. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and it's included in the gospel. He wants to pour out his spirit on flesh, awaken it, quicken it, transfigure it. Transfiguration is the pattern of the future. So we have to learn to take our bodies in the spirit with us. Host our bodies. I am so whacked. I'm, I'm such a good boy because I'm talking. I am talking. Because I tell you what, guys, this week I've been getting wrecked on the gospel. It's just been ruining, wrecking me because I'm seeing it. We're one with Yahweh and everything's changed. Everything's changed. Woo. Someone's saying I'm a good boy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because I'm pushing through for your sake, because I've, I was talking to the Lord earlier, saying, Lord, I give you permissions to give me ecstasies and raptures. I give you permission, Lord, to rapture me. I give you permission to enjoy me and let me enjoy you. I give you permission, wow, to rest on me like snow on a tree, like thick snow on my branches, that you remain on me. And I remain in you and we are one. Man, I am really flying right now. I'm not joking. So Enoch is a prototype. I am like my spirit shooting out. It says, by faith, Enoch was taken away. Hebrews 11, 5. So how was, how was Enoch taken away? Well, he chose to walk with God arm in arm. In other words, he, he kavar. He practiced union. So when you're in the shower, say, Lord, I'm in you. You're in me. But when you're brushing your teeth, I love you. You love me. I'm in. I'm an innie. And just let God drink you. Let God drink you. Wow. Let him swallow you whole. Wow, 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 wow. Woo. So Enoch had that mindset. I, I've, you, know, you guys know this. This is what Enoch communicated to me is that he loved the Lord. So he decided every single day, I am going to go arm in arm with Yahweh and everyone else is separate and doing their own thing, but I'm not. I'm going to live in the bliss. I'm going to enjoy union with God. I'm going to enjoy oneness and I'm going to entangle into him. And God started to take him. He'd phase, he'd have visions first. And then he started to phase dimensions and shift dimensions until he was coming back and forth. He went to heaven and then came back to teach his children for a year. He disappeared. He came back to talk to Noah's dad. And he also came back to talk to Noah. So he was moving in and out of dimensions. And I believe that's the prototype. Like Elijah, Elijah kept disappearing and appearing. And they were like, Elijah, the king wants to see you. Please don't disappear. So they made Elijah swear that he wouldn't face dimensions. Whoa, thank you, Lord. Okay, so by faith, Enoch was taken away. He was caught up. He was translated. He was removed. Hebrews 11, 5. Consider this, guys. What if you practice union over your life and you don't die because God takes you? What if you never die? What if you're in the generation, which Bob Jones prophesied this in the 100-year prophecy, he said by the 2030s, 2040s, 2050s, 2060s, he said more and more people will be living in life, the power of life and immortality, you know, won't taste death. Because there's a realm of life where we're facing dimensions. Now, get this. This is crazy. Francis Metcalf saw this. You know, Francis Metcalf and the ladies of the Golden Lampstand, they engaged Yahweh so much that they had a doorway eventually a doorway formed in the house that would take them into another dimension physically they would come back with clothes garments they would go to other nations now james maloney when he was a young man went in that house and he saw the glowing door and they said you're not ready for that now years later when he went back to that house there was no door it was a spiritual physical door imagine this you have a door in your house 
and it literally takes you into another world. But what about this door that's in here? The gates that are in here, this is a pitch of what's in you, moving wheels. I'll tell you a weird story, guys. I was in bed during a conference, it was near London, and I got a text message in the middle of the night from my friend Jane, and Jane's daughter was sick, very, very sick, and they were about to call an ambulance. So she woke me up and disturbed me. I looked at the text message and it said, we need help. Can you come in the spirit and help? Now, Jane Schroeder is a good friend of mine. She knew how I move in the spirit. So I engaged the, his, her, her daughter, Ruth, and I engaged Jane, and something turned in me. That's the only way to describe it. It was like a wheel turned inside me, like this wheel, and I shot out of my body. My body fell back and fell asleep, but I was completely out of my body. I flew into this room and released life and presence over this girl that was sick. Jane messaged me and said, we felt you come into the room. We felt your presence. When you came in with Holy Spirit, she got healed and went to sleep normally and was well. Now, this amazing thing happened. My spirit did not go back into my body that night. I stayed out of my body the whole night. And I flew over to my friend's house, Stephen McKee. He's a Scottish guy, but he was ministering with me. And I stood over his bed all night long, speaking in tongues, full of glory, full of energy. And then in the morning when I woke up, my, my spirit came back into my body. Listen, guys, this is the new creation life. I am, I'm going for it because I've seen it. I've seen that it's already there. Jesus has done it. It's finished. It's us not thinking right. As you change the way you think, your world changes. So repentance is what? Be transformed by the way you think. See, the problem isn't us. We're new creations. But we keep thinking it's over there in the future, in the millennium. Or we keep thinking, oh, God's got to come in this meeting. It's too late. The whole earth is full of his glory. Woo! Yes, we can have that presence manifest, but you can also engage it and release it. You can lift up your gates and open those doors and release an atmosphere like Peter did, where his shadow because the frequency of his body was so high frequency. Now, my friend Nancy Cohen, they've measured her frequency as she ascends. She's gone off the charts. They couldn't even explain the frequency she went into. And that's why I think she doesn't get sick. She doesn't need much sleep because she enjoys union. She says the divine nature is in you and she enjoys union. She loves my teachings. She wants to be on my mentoring group because she gets so whacked. And yet God's using her to help governments, technology groups, bring God's kingdom into Singapore and the, and the Islamic worlds. Woo! Well, you guys with me? <laughs> Woo! How's it going, Rach? Are we good? Yeah, we're good. We're good. I'm cooking. I'm ready for it, babes. I tell you what, guys. I'm so full of the spirit right now. It could, I, if we were in the room together, it would. We, we, I don't know what would happen, but you know, we are in the spirit connected. So, Father, I pray right now that that energy, mm. that dunamis mm. energy of union, it's in them. The powers yeah. in them would open and flood their DNA, their bodies, their thinking. You're in. You're yes. innocent. Get rid of sin consciousness. That's the old you. Mm. You're a new, innocent being. You're innocent and included in the Trinity. Now let them enfold you. Yeah. Woo. 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 Shikaraba. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So Jesus is the blueprint of us. And all the things Jesus did... He really would like us to do. He's saying, please, would you like to do what I did? Now, let me read what Jesus did. Jesus would make the religious crowd so crazy that they, they didn't like what he said. It challenged them. He made them mad. The scriptures say full of wrath. Now, I've made a few religious people full of wrath. There's a, I've occasionally been thrown out of a conference. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've, I've had a few churches throw me out. I'm okay with that. I forgive them. I love them. Okay, so Jesus, they said they grabbed him and were going to throw him out of the city. This is in Luke 4. And we know what happened next. It says they rose up and thrust him out of the city. 
and they led him to the to the brow of the hill on which their city was built that they might throw him down over the cliff this is looking sketchy for jesus can you imagine it his disciples think jesus is done for they're going to throw him off they've got him but it says this that he walked right through the crowd and went on his way so something happened there that was transdimensional. And a lot of the saints could do this. They could engage their bodies to walk through crowds. Joseph of Cupertino did it. Um, many, many others. Okay. So is it possible to shift your body's dimension? Yes, it is. I've had one time where people couldn't see me. And then I've had other times where I, it's like I'm not quite there. And they, I had like strange times after praying where I've gone to um, Walmart, which is called Asda in the UK. This has happened twice where my spirit's kind of phasing out of the space. And I'm not joking. People walk straight into you. Not just one. Everyone does. Then they go, oh, like that. I didn't see you. It's like for some reason you've blurred out of their perception filter. Now, this happened to me in Starbucks with another guy another mystic we were enjoying Yahweh for two hours people left us alone but we wanted a coffee as we left when we went up to the bar where the staff were I, I spoke and the words just seemed to fall to the ground like I, I wasn't it was like no sound was coming out and I turned to my friend I was like why aren't they answering us why aren't they responding and he had some wisdom he turned to me this guy this young man, he said, I think we've gone too far in the spirit. We need to come out of it somehow. So we both just came out of it, like shook it out and said, Lord, I want to be present here. And then these staff saw us and it was like, what just happened? It was a very strange thing. It was so strange that it took months for me to come to terms with it. And I didn't even start telling people about it for a long time because I couldn't believe it myself, but I've experienced it. I have experienced my body phasing dimensions, and I believe it's just the beginning, guys. There is much, much more coming for all of us. We are going into the best days ever, by the way. It says the glory will be seen upon you, arise and shine. I don't believe in a bad end time. I believe in the next age, which is the age of light, the age of wisdom, the age of immortality, and more than all this is the age of love. The age of love and oneness woo so jesus walked through the crowd and it says other times he vanished so it actually says this look at this scripture again they would this is in john they were taking up stones to stone jesus so jesus is going to be a goner he's about to be stoned <laughs> i don't know what we look like it says this he escaped the angry mob by vanishing wow so he vanished it says Jesus hid himself and he did it in the temple as well. He hid himself. How can you hide yourself in a crowd when they're all looking at you, when they're all looking at you and you hide yourself? I tell you what he was doing. He enfolded his spirit around his body, and just stepped through the veil. He stepped into another dimension. Um, can you guys still hear me? Somebody's saying they can't hear me. Um, just doing a sound check here. Can people hear me? Yes. Great. Great. Yes. Brilliant. Is this a good topic tonight, guys? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. Because this oh, is exciting, guys. This is really exciting. Yes. There's a realm of union. It comes through the breath and simplicity. But within you, that's the beginning of the tornado. The tornado is very gentle at the bottom. It's just a very gentle kiss. Thank and you, you enfold and enfold and then these wheels open up within you and it just goes whoa like that and then you start to go into the expanded states so we've got to learn to practice this mm -hmm. sit for five minutes sit for five minutes man the church is going to look so different in the future one of our team had a dream that they arrived later at one of our conferences and everybody was so in the spirit you couldn't see their bodies you could just see their bags and coats and all the things that were put on the chairs, but the whole room was empty of people. Can you imagine that going in the room and they're in another dimension? These things are going to happen. Now, some people go, the rapture's already happened. <laughs> no, the rapture is a state. 
Paul was wrapped in the spirit. Ezekiel was wrapped in the spirit. Um, all of these people were wrapped. Peter was wrapped. It's a state of being. Um, Bob Jones used to laugh at people waiting for the rapture. Bob Jones, the prophet, he used to say to Larry Randolph, Larry told me this, he would laugh and go, they're waiting for the rapture. I've been raptured five times today. <laughs> <laughs> so guys take your daily rapture take that little daily daily rapture be wrapped in the spirit every day live in the spirit pray in the spirit at all times whoa all times you know my friend nancy she walks in this so much she's literally preached once she was preaching to thousands of chinese people she preached for five days without water food sitting down or going to the toilet for five days, 24 hours a day. One time for nine days, she groaned and made a sound. She didn't drink anything during that. She was in the spirit, having food in the spirit of union. Union is food. Union. Yeah, take your daily rapture. That's right, Ingrid. Okay, so after Jesus died on the cross, he took it to another level. Listen to what it says in Acts 1 verse 3. It says, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. It, the Bible doesn't tell you what he did. He did lots of stuff that's not in the Bible. It said he appeared to them and did lots of convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. So check this out. For 40 days, he's appearing and disappearing. Appearing and disappearing. Guys, that's for you. Imagine you appear in China, you appear in India, you appear here, you appear there, and you're phasing dimensions. What if you disappear for a couple of days and nobody can find you, like Enoch or Elijah? These things are possible. They might sound insane, but it's the gospel. It's not a human message. I don't care how insane it sounds to normal Christians. We're not normal Christians. We're new creatures. We're beyond human. So we're not going to play these human games anymore and try and pretend that we're not married to the divine, that we're in union with the divine. We're one with him. So I want to do a quick share screen with you and show you a funny video. I love this. And then after that, I'll invite Mike to share if he's on the call. If not, I'll keep going. Um, hopefully he's on the call. Yeah, he's here. Great. I'm going to share a funny video with you. It's of Jeremy Nelson, a guy I've done ministry with. He's he's a beautiful, prophetic guy. He loves revival. He's a great guy, a glory guy. Right. And he was mentored by Bobby Connor. And this is a funny clip. Now, I hope this is going to work because I just want to show you a video of Bobby Connor sharing a story of dimensional shifts. So here we go. We're natural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Jeremy Nelson. Uh, in Jeremy, uh, I am just overwhelmed with how the gifts of the Spirit operate in your life. But you started seeing miracles, but yet there was something deep, deep within him that said there must be something more. And he actually, even though he saw more than most Bible believers see, he was frustrated. Yeah. And he hooked up with a man by the name of Bobby Connor. And Bobby Connor started mentoring him, and he would tell him stories of things that happened to him. For instance, uh, tell, me, uh, tell me one of the wilder stories Bobby told you. Yeah, well, I remember, you know, one of the first times uh, that I, I met Bobby, he walked up to me in a conference and said, hey, boy, how'd you like to travel the world with me? God says you're one of my sons. And, so as he invited me to do that, you know, I started going places. One of the first places was uh, we went to Europe and we were there together and, and we were in Holland and as we were hanging out, uh, he told me this story. And I mean, it just like provoked me to what I would say, uh, holy jealousy. And, um, you know, he, he started to tell me about a time that he had a dream and he was asleep at home in his, his home in, in Texas. And anyway, in the dream, he actually was in Peru and he was preaching the gospel from this massive stage. Uh, he was doing a healing campaign and uh, he gave the altar call. Many people got saved, many people got healed. And then uh, after the campaign was over, the Peruvian people put him on a big llama and they said, all right, we're gonna take you down to the, to the city and, and feed you. And so they went down 
But in this dream, the llama actually tripped because Bobby was too big for the llama. I can picture that. And, uh, <laughs> and so the llama tripped and slipped down the hill and Bobby slid down with it. And uh, anyway, he said that as that happened, he woke up screaming. And when he woke up screaming, he woke his wife up and she screamed too, what's going on? And he said, oh, I was just in a dream. And so anyway, the, then at the, the beginning of the day, when he woke up later, he went back to sleep after that. Uh, he went to go get ready for his day and he noticed that at the foot of his bed was the same clothes in the dream that he was wearing and they were covered with llama hair and with dirt. Now, that is supernatural. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> uh, oh, guys, did you enjoy that? That was hilarious, wasn't it? I, I, I can imagine that. Bobby Conn is a really big guy. You know, I've had lunch and meals with him three times, and I've done a conference with him twice. He's a big old boy. I don't know why they tried to put him on a llama, you know? I mean, <laughs> That's a bit much, isn't it? So anyway, guys, God wants you to have fun. If Don't get too uptight about this. The way things work for me is I just say to Yahweh, I want it all. If you're looking for anyone right now, I'm here. I'll have angels that other people don't want. I'll have assignments. I'll have fun. And I enter into this sweetness with Yahweh. And he's taken me to different places and different places is in the earth and in the heavens. But I know that the message is that our bodies are going to be included. Now, I'd like to bring on Mike at this point. So, Rich, is there a way of making me and Mike on the screen together, like talking to each other? Yeah, bear with me. Are you guys enjoying this tonight? <clears throat> Get a thumbs up. There he is. Beautiful. Hi. Mike, Mike, Mike. It's so <laughs> lovely to see you. Yes, absolute treats to have Mike on board tonight. Um, Mike is one of my favorite people, and I learn a lot from Mike being around Mike. He is definitely a forerunner, a prototype, but also very inclusive in that it's for everybody. It's for everybody. And um, Mike, it's so good to see how you're doing. I'm great. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good. Thank you for joining us. I know it's quite late, isn't it, in the UK? We're going to have a Q&A session. In the, we, what we've got is an hour left, but I thought, could you talk about some of your engagement? Like, firstly, I guess people will want to know, you, you've, you've experienced more dimensions than I think anyone I know. Some of the stories you've told me about the dimensions Yahweh's taken you into and the things you've done have, provoke me. They excite me. They thrill me. Um, they don't make me strive. They make me hungry in a good way. But could you first of all talk about how how do you engage Yahweh and enter into those realms? Like if we're starting from scratch and some people on the call will be asking, like, how do I do that? And I know it's different for everyone. So you don't have to match me. I kind of get whacked and do meditation. But you just share and I'll jump in at any point. So just start going and then we'll 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 pick it up again. OK, um, to start with, I engage God within. Um, so within the core of my being, I engage with Father, Son and Spirit, and that activates and energizes me. And then from that point, then anything's possible. And so initially, I want to engage in the presence of the light of God in his love. And I just want to rest there. So that's where I start. I've got no agenda. I've got no think of where I want to go or what I want to do I just want to be with him so I spend time in the light of his love in his presence and then the light just seems to come around me and shapes me and that begins to form his intentions and sometimes his intentions are we're just going to stay in that place and so that becomes a state of being that I just enjoy and to be honest that's that's my favorite place within that place of light but there are other times that I know the Father's intentions are for me to be aware of where I already am. Mm -hmm. So I learned to become multidimensional and non-linear. So that means I'm in multiple places at the same time doing multiple things, which mm -hmm. increases your capacity somewhat to enjoy this life greatly and to have joy in this life, but also to be constantly engaged in that state of being. So it's not so much what I'm doing, but actually the state of being that I'm in. And so I enjoy it. It's so joyful mm. to be in that state of being. 
now wherever the father takes me mm. then i can go back there so the father's intention initially back in say 2015 he talked about going beyond mm. and beyond beyond i didn't know where that was but i decided i would just go to go with it and eventually after some training and equipping and re-deconstruction of my mind eventually that took me to a place beyond where i'd been before and that actually opened the door to some other dimensions and other beings that i first engaged with at that moment so mike let's jump in then so have you got like a favorite seat where you sit down to start this or a favorite place or do you do it anywhere I can I can do it anywhere because I'm already doing it. Therefore, it's just a shift of consciousness to engage where I already am and then become consciously aware of where I already am. But initially, the encounters were cognitive and I learned where all those places were. So initially, there were three beings from three dimensions. And over a period of time, I engaged them a number of times and then went into their dimensions and did what the father wanted okay. me to do. Let, we'll come into that in a second. So let, do you have like a favorite seat where you sit down, you just breathe and you enjoy Yahweh? You've, you've said to me before yeah. that where you can't, your entry point for you is going into the father's love. Is that right? You yeah. go in. So you go into that place where you know he's Papa Daddy and he loves you and you love him and you just kind of enjoy that. Is that right? Is that how it opens for you? Yeah. I mean, and in a sense, I'm there now. So yeah. all I have to do is just engage that and then I'm consciously aware of that now. Yeah. So it's a conscious state of reality and being that I can just engage consciously anytime. But every day I love to just engage the father and rest there. So, yeah, I've got a, a reclining seti thing. So I just recline, enjoy and wherever that goes wherever the father's intentions take me, then I will engage that consciously. Beautiful. That's so beautiful. So, I mean, how it works for me is you start to get a feeling for different places, don't you? So you might not see it, but you'll feel it like the father's love. There's a feeling, isn't there, with that? Um, yeah. I mean, they're all my senses are involved. So yeah. my whole being's involved. I, I feel it. I mean, I journal everything. So my whole, my body, I'm awake, my eyes are open, I'm journaling, but I'm there. So I'm really just describing where I am, um, wherever that might be. And that might be in the light of the Father's presence, that might be within the Father's heart, that might be within the eternal uh, aspect of God's presence, where everything is all now anyway. It's beautiful. So when you first started engaging these realms, I mean, what were the first places God took you? Was it like Eden or did you sense the throne or did you go somewhere in the earth? What were the first places that started to open up for you? I mean, the, the first heavenly encounter was where the fire stones are by the river of fire, where the father's throne is around the, the, the fire. So the, the ancient of days and the father, Jesus sitting next to him. So that was my first encounter. And eventually I found myself uh, on my face before the throne of God not couldn't even look I mean I so desperately wanted to look at the father on, on the throne I couldn't even look but I was aware there were thrones next to me going off in the distance and so I crawled off and found where my throne was and I sat on it and that opened up but immediately I was next to Jesus who was next to the father and I think we're all next to Jesus next to the father because we can all be there at the same time in that same dimension and so that was the first started. Then, uh, then I went through Eden and the waterfalls and the garden. And eventually I got to the father's garden. And that's where everything began to become that oneness, that union, because the father just wouldn't let me do anything. You know, I, I'm a sort of a doer. You know, I was then. And I just wanted to, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? What's this about? What's going on? And he just, and he would just look at me and I, could, I just had to stop. And eventually I got so much that I just stopped that I was like floating in the air. Well, there's no air, but in the atmosphere. And eventually my whole being just spaghettified and I was <laughs> out in creation. Literally yeah. all the atoms and particles of my being 
was joined with the rest of creation. And that's the first time I really felt the desire of creation to be set free. I know exactly what, you know, what you're talking about, the expanded state where it's like super expansion, super entanglement into creation, knowing it's almost all there and it's all there. You're, you're connected to it all. That's beautiful. Carry on, Mike. That, that's just so what happened to your body at that moment? Were you just journaling or were you sitting in the chair or I was I was journaling. But I, I had, I just stopped. I could, I, could, I just became completely unaware of where I was. Spaghettified. Yeah, I mean, literally, it was a complete trance-like state at that moment. When I was in the garden in the first time by the firestones, that was a trance-like state. I was just completely unaware of my physical surroundings and everything, and that was another one like that. I was just completely unified and one with creation feeling the father's desires for creation but also feeling the creation's desire for oneness yeah. and restoration really wow you know. i could feel that as we're talking and guys tap into this I, I i have had many things open up just by hearing someone's voice or being with them it's like as mike's talking i'm feeling that expandedness i love having new words spaghettification <laughs> spaghettify us lord <laughs> Spaghetti, someone's saying spaghetti must be in Romans. I'm sure it's there in one translation. It is a te technical word. It's actually a real word for that, that whole process. Beautiful. Yeah. So what happened after you ex ex experienced that expandedness? And why do you think that happened to you? Well, I think it was to connect me with creation, to feel the father's connectedness with creation. Because, you know, if we're in him and he's connected to everywhere, then we're connected to everywhere. We just become more aware of it at some times. And this was a moment which I think was a signature moment. And I think I've probably had another 10 encounters like that, which have all been slightly different, but all have connected to me creation. And it's just given me a desire to see creation restored. You know, I felt the burden um, that creation feels, the groaning, but I've also felt the joy and the pleasure of God's intention for creation that he originally had. And the, it will be restored back to um, and that motivates me I mean it just moves me with the desire to see everything and everything that Jesus created everything was created by him and for him and through him and he has already reconciled all that so it's a matter of bringing all that back into conscious relationship with what he's already done so mm. I think that was that was the sort of the things and it all this builds you know like you get an encounter like that it's like you have no idea really what it was, but it was just so wonderful. And then another encounter and another one. Eventually it builds to a state of being. So it's almost consciously, continually aware of that place. I think it's kind of like, um, you know, some people might be wondering, what does that feel like? It feels like part of you is just enjoying the, the, the it's like when you're enjoying the sun hitting you sitting in your kitchen say part of you is enjoying the sun it's like part of you is caught away isn't it and caught away into lots of places and yeah. i think that becomes normal where like jesus said i always do what i'm seeing you know the father doing being having visions is kind of not the realm we're going to is it visions are just snippets they're like like a picture we call them pictures but we're meant to live in the flow of a continual conversation where we, I know it sounds bad, but you don't need prophets in that, do you? Like you, Mike, don't need me to prophesy over you. No. Because you you, you walk with Papa, you walk in union. It's the same for me. Like I'll often be puzzling over a question and I'll just talk to the Lord and he'll, he'll either take me to meet something or do something. And it's like beyond the prophetic as well, because the prophetic saw a vision came or a word came, but this has been in the spirit at all times where we start to live a, a very different life in a way isn't it because if people walk past you in the street they wouldn't know that you are this multi-dimensional being cosmic being no um i think there's a sense where when you when you connect with people you can feel and sense who they are their spirit their being they might not know it themselves but you can sometimes pick up the light that they're, they're radiating. And yeah. that doesn't mean that they necessarily know what that is yet, yeah. um, but you sense it and I feel it sometimes, you know, and sometimes it is very practical. 
you know you were talking about you know going in and out you know quant scientifically that's called quantum tunneling you, you essentially you go into another realm and come out the other side i, I was um i was in an airport in in belgium in brussels and i had just flown from hanover and the flight was an hour and 40 minutes and we took off over an hour late and so i i i'm, I'm not going to miss my flight was my intention um and everyone else i didn't want them to miss their flight so i talked to the the angels that were with me and we ended up doing an hour and 40 minute flight in about 20 minutes and we just <laughs> we were just there and then when we got off the other end there was this this girl i think she was probably in her early 20s i called her a girl um and she she was going to the same place as me she wanted to go to bristol airport in the uk and she was like oh no we're, we're gonna we're gonna miss we're gonna miss the flight you know so i said look okay walk with me we'll be okay so we walked and there was this big queue because we had to go to another terminal because we were going off mainland europe and so there was this massive queue and we had to go through the the checking again thing um so we got there and there was this big queue and i just took her with me in the spirit and we were on the other side of the queue the wow line, on the other side of it and she was like she looked at me as if what's just happened I said it'll be okay just keep walking so we, we carried on walking got to the gate and we caught the flight so that was a an instant of you know actually going through people uh, or going into a realm but I took someone else with me who I, I don't think was a believer at that point hopefully that opened up a realm for <laughs> to uh, some amazement but in in reality these things are very practical and at other times you know I've traveled to China and Russia and other places just by making myself available and i find myself ministering to people in there and it's actually i don't i don't know whether i go physically but i am a physical being when i'm there engaging people because they can touch me and i can touch them but i think it's almost like a translation to another place in the spirit mm. but then my spirit becomes flesh uh, mm -hmm. which is what angels do when they manifest they're spiritual beings but sometimes you can touch them and engage with them yeah. because they're able to manifest so that that's happened quite a quite a lot um and that's also, beautiful i've had experiences fine. like that where um where groups of us have had i was in the philippines we had one hour break and we had to go to this restaurant and the traffic was so heavy that it took us over half an hour to get there and the pastor said to me he said, Justin, you do rich time miracles. <laughs> he said, can you do a rich time miracle? And I was like, oh, Papa, I need you. But I just went up in like you did. And I just created space for us to have a lovely lunch. So this was an amazing thing. We, we got to the restaurant. We had the full meal. And we had to drive another half an hour back, which would have made us at least half an hour to an hour late. We got back five minutes before the next session. It was physically impossible to do it. And I've seen group trans relocations like that a bunch of times. And would you agree, Mike? I think that we're, this is where things are changing. We're, we're all going to learn how to do this. This is in the ages. Of, I love Bobby Connor. So I shared that video. But that age has ended, isn't it? Where we look at Bobby Connor or Jeremy Nelson or anyone else, but we see all of us through this kindness lens where you're in Christ, I'm in Christ. And it, having given us Jesus, has he not given us every good thing? So, you know, I wonder like if we're going to even have to change the way we gather together, because in the past, the gatherings are all external, aren't they? Where you, you do worship, you have your preach and we'll still do those things. But I feel like we're going to have to make room, aren't we, for shifting into union and dimensions. And it might look really, really different to what churches look like in the past. Yeah. For me, for me what, what happens with me is God does something involuntary. I, I just It just happens. And because it's just happened, then for me, that means that I can do what God has done for me. So then I can choose for that to happen. So then it becomes intentional. So I remember once I was driving to a meeting to actually meet Lindy. I, I was set off late because um, things were running late. And it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a meeting that was desperately had to be on time. But I was just driving along, went around a corner, and then I found myself somewhere else. The whole car, I was, and, I, and I was actually monitoring my mileage. 
And on the way back, it was seven miles longer than on the way there. So the whole car went around the corner and was seven miles up the road. And I got there early. And but it was totally unintentional. It wasn't even that I was asking for that because I didn't really need to be there early, but it happened. So then I was taking my daughter to the catch a train. We got to a point where there was a huge traffic jam for some reason, and it took us over half an hour to get through the traffic jam and the station was 40 minutes away. So we were going to miss the, the train. According to my daughter, we were going to miss the train. And she was like, oh, no, we're going to miss it. I said, look, it's OK. We'll be OK, because I knew that I'd traveled in a car and I would traveled in a distance in instantly without even knowing it. Um, and so I said to her, it'd be OK. And so we we were two minutes from the station or two minutes from the train leaving and we were 10 miles away. And then we were there and she looked at me. I said, don't look at me, just catch the train. So she got out of the car, got the train, caught it because God did it for me. Then I could choose to do it yeah. only when it's the father doing it. You see, if the father wasn't doing that at that moment, I would have not felt permitted to do it. But because I engaged with the father continually, I knew it was the father's yeah. heart that my daughter didn't miss the train. That's beautiful. Uh, this is what you've I love reading about the saints and many of them learn how to do this mike they, they, there's lots of examples which i i've got in my notes but not will bring up now where they had to walk through crowds because sometimes this happened with a number of them they'd be ripping their their, their clothes to, to take some mm -hmm. of them yeah. and their clothes would regenerate this didn't just happen once now with joseph of cupertino they thought it was so wrong they got angry with him and moved him twice so that crowds couldn't follow him but with some of the saints, they would they would shift dimensions and walk through the people and be past them. Yeah. But they also knew how to do this at will, some of them. So some of the saints I've read, they would often go to churches at night to pray, not needing sleep. And they would walk through. They would walk through the doors. Mm. And, you know, yeah, someone saying Jesus did that. And I think we're coming into that age. I know like with ian clayton when i've spent time talking to ian clayton he told me once that he was preaching and he was in the spirit like he often is and he didn't know this but his his, his fingers went through his bible so they were <laughs> through the middle of the bible and the people saw the fingers sticking through because he hadn't realized he'd shifted dimension so much that literally his fingers are sticking through the um, the middle of his bible and then uh, another time he was preaching and he went to move a chair and he was in the spirit and his hand went through the chair in front of everybody. Um, so he had an encounter in the spirit where he was on this mountain being taught by a saint. And the saint said, I want to teach you to put your hand into a rock. And he said, that's impossible. So we showed him a puddle, said, put your hand in the puddle. He drew it out and then the saint went like that. And he saw he'd actually put his hand in a rock. But the way he thought... Now, when he came out of that encounter, so he's in the spirit in heaven doing this, he he looked at the mirror, uh, the, sorry, the window in his kitchen, and he said, it's just water. He put his hand into it, and he told me this. I hear this from him directly. The glass rippled as his hand went through it. So I really think we're coming into days of incredible awe and wonder. Now, coming back to you, Mike, and this might stretch people, but God started then opening up other dimensions for you in the universe. Now, I don't want people to get offended or worried about this. This is beautiful. Remember, it's in union. It's for the restoration of all things. It's love. But one of the things I love about you, you provoke me. And you said to me recently, the Lord had taken you to shine light into different dimensions to see what happens. Mm. Could you just gently talk us into that and excite us and show us what's possible because you're you're blowing my mind i love it okay uh initially you know this was the father's desire to open this realm for me but i i didn't want to do it you know i, I really it was almost like this is too hard my for my my soul didn't want to do it so the father showed me where i could go into sort of a dimensional place but i made it hard for myself initially because it just appeared like this slit of 
light was going around and I couldn't go through it. Um, but actually that was the projection of my soul's fear because I didn't know what was there. You know, and the first time I jumped through it, eventually, it was so otherworldly, other dimensional, I couldn't fathom anything. Up, down, colors, it was just too much. Yeah. I came back out and the father was standing there smiling. I said, well, what was the point of that? I've been waiting for two years to go through this thing. And I go through and I can't understand any of it. And he said, well, why did you go through it without me? And I thought, oh, oh, yeah. So, so the next time I'm there, we go through together. And there's like this sort of ante room. And there were three races of beings that were sort of dimensional beings, humanoid, but weird and slightly odd. Um, and they kept asking me questions. And you know what the, what the question that got me the most? They said, tell us the story. I said, what story? They said, the love story. Wow. We want to hear the love story. Wow. And what I found is our sonship is producing frequencies that is stirring them to hope. And within all of their dimensional races, there is the story. Hmm. They haven't connected to it, but it's in the fabric wow. of their dimensions, a desire to engage the story. I can feel that right now. Let's pause a second. Guys on this call, just feel that. The cry in creation, it says that he wants to manifest his wisdom through us to principalities and powers in heavenly realms. This is completely biblical. Paul said this was the point of the gospel, that beings in heavenly or cosmic realms, other dimensions, would come to know Yeshua, come to know the Trinity. Just feel that, Lord, we thank you for the hunger for the sons. It says all creation is groaning for the revealing of the sons. I love this, Mike. So you were there with these three beings and yeah. they wanted to know the, the, the love story. story. And I was like, what story? And they said the love story. So, and I said, okay. It's like, and I, and I sort of, I withdrew and I wanted to, I said to the father, how do I tell him the story? And he just said, release the love. You know, they'll wow. feel the love. <laughs> I love it. Well, it's not exactly telling them anything, but being something. So it's like, if I don't love them, how are they ever going to respond? So it was like, how do you love something that's really weird and dimensional? Because God created it. And the more you hang out with love, the more love you feel for everything that God is connected to. So eventually I went back, went to their dimensions and specifically engage each of the dimensions, you know, and it, they were not nice places. I mean, they were places which had been severely affected by the worst of our dimension um, and had sort of taken that on board to the nth degree. And, but I released love and I helped them by releasing the things. Now, eventually I went back to those dimensions and then the father introduced me to another six races and then another six races. And then eventually I discovered that these portals, and we, we've engaged some of these things out in the cosmos, in every constellation, there's portals that engage these dimensions and there are guardians that look after these portals or some of them. And so eventually we went through some. Um, we went, yeah. one that remember we went out well, into- Let's pause a second, because just hearing people's thoughts on how does this function, it, we'll come into that now, what you're about to say, because I think it's really important. But is that the key here is you were doing it with Yahweh. Yeah. Which is Psalm 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. So in union with God, I mean, I know exactly what that's like. When I'm with him, it doesn't matter where you are. Does it? Because you know that you are with the, with him and he's with you and he's guiding you, isn't he? So it's yeah. not like we're just going where we want, doing what we want. Although there's freedom of choice. Yeah. He's guiding you through these experiences. Essentially how it works for me, I hang out in his presence in the light. The light weaves around me and forms some sort of shape that I begin to conform to. And then it's like, I know his desire. It's the, it's the intentions of his will, his desire and purpose. And I just allow myself to be molded into it. You know, it says in Romans 12, you know, do not be conformed to this world or do not be molded into this world. 
Well, I allow myself to be molded into the light of his intentions. And then that, that gives me access to wherever the father wants me to go and engage because it's his intention. And it's never done independently. I never go anywhere unless first engaging the father's intention. And I love that about you, that you always talk about is it's actually the restoration of all things is connected to the father's love, isn't it? It's oh, all coming from the father's, yeah. the frequency of the father. Mm -hmm. And it's just that beautiful, beautiful sonship revelation that we're, we're, we're the children of Yahweh. And he loves us with, with an yeah. incredible love. Absolutely. And what, once I was in that place and I was just being conformed and I felt overwhelming mercy. Wow. It was it was like waves and waves and waves so much so that I just could not contain any more. I was just overwhelmed, mm -hmm. you know, physically, even even though I was in my chair, I felt completely overwhelmed with mercy. And wow. then I went to again through a portal to these dimensions. And I knew I just had to release mercy into those dimensions. So I really, you're like, blowing me away, guys. I don't know if you guys are feeling this, like mercy, loving kindness. Absolutely. Said. Yeah, covenant love, mercy, loving kindness. And so I released it. I didn't go into the dimensions. I just released it into the portals. Um, and then I felt what came back. I felt where it had been completely absorbed and hardly anything came back and it was like wow this needs a lot and the first time i did it it's almost like i emptied myself of all the mercy that i had just received and i felt empty so i thought i, I haven't got any more to give and then the father said to me remember you're still here with me so you're a conduit of mercy not a container wow. it's not how much you can contain it's how much you can let it flow through you. Wow. So it just wow. flowed through me. And so I thought, yeah, but, but there's not enough can flow through me. And then he said, you might be a straw, but <laughs> with many others together, you're a pipeline. Yeah. Uh, and that's but, why I love doing it with other people, because actually we can do so much more together than I can do on my own. I love this because it's like I keep saying, you know, the prophetic love talking about portions but it's not a portion. It's the spirit without limit, isn't it? It's not a portion. A portion's not going to do it. A double anointing is not going to do it. It's it's a flow where you are actually light and you represent Yahweh. And to creation, they are seeing Yahweh in you. Have you got any ideas what you look like and sound like when you're in those dimensions? Well, I, I, I sound like the sound of his voice. Because what I found is the more I brood in his presence and in his light and in his heart, the more that conforms me to his desires um, and his intentions. And then when I speak, it's like I'm speaking with his voice. And that's how they respond, because they're hearing him. I'm not speaking yeah. the words which are just words that I would speak. So it feels like I am a frequency resonating. It's almost I am the sound of many waters. And so it sometimes isn't even words that's come out. Yeah, yeah. It's just an overwhelming frequency of love or joy or peace or, or mercy or grace, limitless grace. Often I release limitless grace. Wow. And this is the thing, isn't it, Mike? This is why it's so important to encounter Papa so that oh, what you yeah. release out there is kindness, is love. Because, you know, a lot of the church is hung up, isn't it, on judgment, punishment, you know, all these doctrines of anger. And I think that's why people can't be trusted, because if I look at the people I know who are really moving in this, like Nancy Cohen and yourself, one of the defining characteristics of you guys and others that I've met is just the frequency of grace. It's love. It's, it's a love story. How God has described it to me, and this is a catchphrase that I, I sort of, it's my state of being. It's live loved, love living and live loving. Therefore, I live in that state of being. I know that I'm loved unconditionally. I don't have to do anything. I'm just loved unconditionally. That yeah. gives me such joy because I love life. Life is so joyous to live because I'm loved. And then, of course, I freely give what I freely receive so I can love others. That means people, whether they love me or not, is not the issue. And also anything else that God has created 
I can love. And they know you when you love you your love. garden, don't you? you I do love my garden, yeah. Uh, it's I, not I, like you're I, just, yeah. you're doing all this stuff, but you're very practical. Your church ministry feeds the homeless. It's got a drugs program. The police work with you. Social services work with you. I've been to your place many times. You've got training for people in skills. So this does get embodied even here, doesn't it? It's not just out there. It's oh, everywhere. It's yeah. I mean, it, it is a manifestation of where you are. As you said earlier, we are manifesting heaven around us all the time now that doesn't look like a church service it looks like an expression of love and that might be for someone they need to be fed they need to be clothed they need to somewhere to live that yeah. is god loving them and i could preach the gospel to them in words but if they're hungry they're still hungry even after i've spoken to them but if i feed them it opens them up to the reality of God's love, because we ex we, we tell people very yeah. clearly. <laughs> Dude, you're wrecking me, man. Yeah, I, I tell you what, you're wrecking me. Guys, let, let this touch you, because I'm just feeling so much of the Father's love right now. Because it just, you know, one thing, Mike, I was shown, I was shown the, the book of our universe in the heavens, and it said on the cover, it was like a parable, but the Lord showed it to me as a book saying they all lived happily ever after. That's what was on the cover of this book. And I know it's a parable, but that's what Jesus wants, isn't it? He wants joy mm. to all the cosmos. You know, it's and towards the end of this Beyond Human series, Mike, my last session is on cosmic consciousness. Mm. And I would love for you to come back on when we get to that point oh, yeah. and go into a bit of territory on that. But, um, right, how are we doing for time? Because I wanted to allow, right, yeah, we've got half an hour left. Are you still good to stay on the call for half an hour? Yeah, sure. Is there anything you want to say before we do question and answer from what we were just talking about? Uh, I, I just say in, in spending time in the presence of the Father and just being in that state, the three key things that i think the father's really impressed is is unconditional love mm. um, and if if love isn't unconditional it isn't love because you can't love isn't something you reward someone for it has to be unconditional and what goes with unconditional love is limitless grace you know people get a problem with hyper grace and they don't like it well yeah. grace is limitless not just hyper it's limitless. That means there are no limits to the divine enabling power of God to enable us to be loved, which is really what grace does. It enables us to be loved. And then the third thing is triumphant mercy. And triumphant mercy is mercy which triumphs over what? Everything. Everything that stops us experiencing unconditional love. So it's going to win. You know, you talk about love winning. Love has already won. Yeah. And it's going to continue to be expressed because grace is limitless and mercy is triumphant. So. Wow. Mm. I'm pausing because I'm just so I am experiencing the things you're talking about tonight. So good. Guys, just get that in your heart. Limitless grace. You know, this is why, you know, I'm trying to get people to get the beyond human thing is that it's too late. Jesus has done it for you. And so much of the church is about. Have you got this sin in your life? Have you made these things? And it's all the wrong conversation because if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creature. And what I found is if you concentrate on union, a lot of those issues just fall away because you're enjoying what you were made for. You're hooked up to the most high. You're engaging a limitless life and everything you're looking for in all those pleasures you found, all your fountains are in him. And when he becomes the source it's like, wow, I've had some days, Mike, where I just feel like it's unfair that God's so good, you know, because I'm enjoying it and walking around. And um, mm. yeah, anyway, I'm not very eloquent right now because I, what you're carrying, I believe, is next age theology that's coming in now is that it's about love. You know, Paul talked about this. He said prophecies will pass away. All this stuff will pass away. But now I will show you the more excellent or powerful way and love is god really union with god he is love and we are love and what the universe wants is love animals want to see love the oceans the the clouds everything else 
Great. Well, we're out of time, guys. Um, Mike, any last words? Are you good? No, just live loved. <laughs> live loved. It's beautiful. Beautiful good message. <laughs> so people can find out more about Mike online. He's got a YouTube channel and you've got tons of resources. <laughs> and you've also got a couple of great books, The Restoration of All Things and Beyond Beyond, is it called? Yeah. Yeah. Beyond. yeah I love you so much. Let's I just want to thank everyone for being on the call. <laughs> Glory. Come on. Thank you, Father. Woo! Woo! <laughs> awesome guys. Thank you.